Sorry, hold on one second. Okay. Ray, what is parasitism? Is it a relationship where the science Symbiote. 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 Yep. Yeah, so what's an example of parasitism? So, Ray, what is an example of parasitism? Uh, parasites. Like what? How about fleas? Are they parasites? Yes. Yeah, they absolutely are, right? If, uh, like, let's say your dog gets fleas, right? The dog isn't happy that they're there. In fact, they can even transmit diseases, right? How about ticks? Right? If you if you got a tick, you don't want it there. In fact, it could, it could even kill you in some cases, right? Like we talked about yesterday, the parasite doesn't want to kill the host. It's just kind of a byproduct of the interaction between these two organisms. So we're going to continue talking about these symbiotic relationships. So if you guys can please take a look up at the TV as soon as the iPad decides it wants to work again. Yeah, yeah sometimes, sometimes. Hold on, give it a second. All right, we're going to try this again. See if technology wants to work with me today. We'll, uh, we'll yell over the, uh, the lawnmower. All right, take a look at the TV for me, please. So yesterday, we started talking about symbiotic relationships. We covered parasitism. Now, we're going to go ahead and talk about mutualism. Mutualism is a relationship between the host and the symbiote where both organisms benefit and neither is harmed. Pretty good official, right? So before we talk about the rest of this, can anyone think of a relationship that sounds like that? Both organisms benefit, neither is harmed. Good. Well, bees and flowers. Bees and flowers, right? Bees get to take all that wonderful nectar and they get to go make honey and all that stuff, right? They take pollen with flowers them. Get to yeah, the flowers get fertilized. That's a great example of a mutualistic uh, relationship. Anybody else? Mutualism. What do you got, Grace? A butterfly and a flower. A butterfly and a flower. Same thing as the bee, right? They get that nice meal, but the flowers get to bloom because they get fertilized. Great. Melissa? I probably... Or Madison, I'm sorry. It's I promise okay. I'll get it right. It's okay. Um, like, I probably already said this before, um, but an enemies and clownfish. One more time. An enemies and clownfish. Ah, yeah, that's true. Also another mutualistic relationship. Good. What do you got? Ah, a cleaner fish. Yeah, so it'll be clean your shelf's teeth. That's right. Yeah, the shells will be clean. That's right. Very good. Those are all great examples of mutualism. So the relationship can be long or short term. For example, in the photo above, the host flower benefits by being pollinated by the traveling butterfly. The symbiote butterfly benefits from the nectar that is extracted from the flower. So what I'd like you guys to do. So I'd like you to write this down into your notes, but not this bottom stuff. I just want you to write this right here. Mutualism is a relationship between the host and the symbiote where both organisms benefit and neither is harmed. You can write that down into your notes, and then we will move on. That first bullet point. Luckily for me. <laughs>
Christ. Doing okay? Christ lives again. Good. I passed those down since yesterday. And you just moved right on, didn't you? Remember just that first bullet point is mutualism, the relationship between the host, the symbiote, or both organisms benefit and neither is harmed. Parasitism. We know mutualism. There's one more. And that is commensalism. Michael, you want to read this one out loud for us? It's the relationship between the host and symbiote where the symbiote will benefit and the host is neither health nor harm. Very good. The symbiote benefits by receiving transportation, housing, and or nutrition. Example, symbiote barnacles receive transportation from the host whales. The host whales neither help nor help by the barnacles. Very good. Very good. All right. So before we go ahead and write anything down, can anyone think of an example of a uh, an example of commensalism? Sid? Well, I was going to say a little more fish in the show. Okay. Uh, how so? You're correct, but explain your reason. They don't do anything. They're just there. Shark doesn't really seem to mind, right? Shark doesn't help. He's not hurt. But the fish, well, they get all the benefits, don't they, right? Protected by the big, bad shark of the ocean. Very good. What else? Maybe else can think of another example of commensalism. Bryce, what do you got for me? Think of an example of commensalism. Oh, we just talked about that one. Think about it. It's a relationship where one is neither helped nor harmed, but the other one gets all the benefit. Can't think of anything. Anybody else want to take a crack at it? Commensalism. I'll tell you what, you guys all have those laptops in front of you, right? Why don't we, eat, why don't we all take a second? Let's look at an example, right? Let's see commensalism. Once you found something, raise your hand. Shout it out. Let us, let us know what's going on. What do you got? Birds and hollowed-out trees. Ah, oh, that's a good one. Very good. Let's hear two more. Two more. What do you got? Madison. Um, <laughs> um, the birds that are on and you're on the Oh, that is a good one. Very good. What do you got? Polar bears and arctic foxes. Polar bears and arctic foxes. Explain that one. When the polar bear eats food, the arctic fox will sneak up and just take what's in the room. Okay. All right. So it sounds like we all have some pretty solid examples of commensalism. So here's what you need to do for me now. You guys go into Google Classroom as soon as it wants to load for me. Hold on. All right, when you go into Google Classroom, you are going to see the post, it's the second one. I want you to go ahead and click on that for me. Ecology reading. Ecology reading. Please read the following article and provide at least one detail from each of the paragraphs that you found to be the most important. Take your time and do your best. When you click on the article, it should take you to Khan Academy, and the article that you'll be reading is, what is it loading. <laughs> yes, it's from chemistry. All right, well, while, while this decides to eventually load for me, what you guys are gonna do in the meantime is go ahead and open that up. Is there anybody in here that's having difficulty opening the article? Hey, there we go. So, it should look like this. What is ecology? Everybody sees that? Yes. Raise your hand if you do not have the article up in front of you right now. Okay, good. What you're gonna do is you're, we're gonna take some time here and we're gonna read through this article and we're gonna see 
if we can, you know, kind of pick apart some information that maybe we don't know about ecology yet, right? Take your time, and again, do your best. Your goal, however, is the notes part of this. So each paragraph has something very important embedded in it. What you're going to do is you're going to decide what is that important thing, right? So, for example, let's read the first one together. Welcome to ecology. Have you ever hiked through a forest and noticed the incredible diversity of organisms living together? From ferns to trees to mushrooms the size of dinner plates. Or taken a road trip and watched the landscape change outside the window, shifting from oak forest to tall stands of pine to grassy plains. If so, you've gotten a classic taste of ecology, the branch of biology that examines how organisms interact with each other and with their physical environment. So out of that first paragraph, out of this whole thing that you're going to be reading today, there was one thing in there that was probably the most important. Does anybody know what that would have been? In your opinion, what's the most thing out of that, most important thing out of this first in paragraph? Michael? Ecology is the branch of biology that examines how organisms interact with each other and with their physical environment. Very good, right? So that would be, that would be great to write down. Now obviously, we're doing everything electronically, right? So you guys can take that and just copy and paste it into your notes so that we have that moving forward. You're going to find the things that mean the most to you. And we're going to share those at the end of class. Do we have any questions, comments, or concerns of what I'm expecting from you at this point? Raise your hand if you know everything you're supposed to do right now. Raise your hand if you have no idea. You're going to put it into your notes. Yeah. Your notes will be part of your grade assignment today. Anybody else? I don't know. Do you need help, Ray? All right, I'll be right in just a second. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Uh, yeah, you're going to take those down into your notes. Okay. All right. All right, good luck.